In this segment, we're going to show the basic uh, feeder cable wrap. Uh, it's very similar to the extension cord, but obviously the cable's a lot bigger uh, and somewhat more difficult to handle. Um, brand new cable is one thing, but we never get brand new cable. Gloves are important because you never know where the cable's been or what's happened to the cable since it was brand new. Cable does, the neoprene or sanoprene jacketing on the cable does hold um, microbes and germs and it is semi-porous so you do have to pay attention to what it's been in. When we're putting cable into coils you need to know what size, what are you going to do with the cable after you coil it. Does it have to go into a jockey box? Is it going onto a pallet? Is it just getting thrown into the back of the truck to go back to a rental house? Or wh where's the cable going? So you need to figure out what size wrap to do. Most of the cable that I deal with, the feeder cable, we use between a 28 and a 32 inch diameter wrap. Okay. That seems to be the general principle. You don't want to make it too big because it ends up uh, being very difficult to handle. and We'll illustrate that later on. Always make sure that the feeder cable is de-energized. If you can, start with the male end because that way you know that it's not, doesn't have power on it and you won't find the power if the insulation is broken. First part of it, get the male end of the cable, clear the knots out of the cable tie so that you can lay it out nicely. Lay it out flat so that when we coil a cable on top of it, we can get to the ties. You don't want to have to lift the feeder cable to find the ties because this stuff is heavy. We start out laying it out. If you've got a piece that has a set to it, sometimes you can put a foot on one of the ties to get you started because as you're pulling on it, it will tend to try to untwist. We want to put a half twist in the direction of the lay of the cable. That should be clockwise in the United States. That's how cable is made. If you look at a piece of stripped cable, you'll see a natural lay of the cable, much like a piece of rope. Start with your feet about shoulder width apart, however you feel comfortable. You can bend your back, bend your knees. You wanna bend your knees just a little bit and start pulling and putting a half twist as you go. Sometimes you may need to kick it with your foot to keep it the proper size. And just keep working the twists down the other end, free end of the cable. And just keep twisting and pulling and turning. It doesn't matter that you get everything exactly to the right size, but you want to get it approximate. We're going to make up for that with the cable ties, but you want to get close. So we just keep pulling hand over hand and putting a twist into it as you go so that the cable lays out flat. As I'm going along, I'm also looking and feeling the cable for any breaks or incongruities in the cable. Sometimes cable will get run over or pinched. You want to feel for that. If you find a piece that way, you want to look at the jacket to make sure that it's not broken. You don't want to see our friendly copper strands anywhere along the length of the cable. Obviously the insulation is bad. You can send it in for repair, but at least tag the cable to let the next person know that there's a break in the insulation. You may want to stop 
and put a wrap of tape around it to mark that bad section of the cable. And you just continue on till you get near the end. And all of the twists that you've done and the cable should be relatively flexible and look, in this case, the female end, make sure that the connector isn't burned. Anytime you're coiling cable, that's the time to inspect it. Take a look at it. And I lucked out that my ends are approximately in the same spot, so I'll be able to connect them. That way, when you lift up the cable, the end doesn't flop and uh, hurt you. Or worse, when you stack it up 10 high and the ends flopped out, that one piece you need is now strangled or pinned by another piece of cable. So you want to connect the ends together so that they're not flopping and it makes for a neater, easier method of handling because feeder cable is heavy. It's not fun to play with. Now, once we've got it coiled up, we've laid out our ties, so we just reach through, cross them, pull it up tight, and then bring it around. If the cable tie was longer, I would continue around again to use up all of this tie and then pull it pretty taut so that it's bound tightly so that that's solid. And it's easier to tie one side and then mate the connectors and then tie the other side. Tighten it up really tight. I personally and was taught to use a square knot. Again, because a half bow or a bow knot may come out, it may snag on things, it may get pinned under another piece of cable. So you want to make sure that you make a tight coil. That way, it stays together. The other thing that I like to do is, especially on locations, leave it standing on edge. I've got a nice tight coil. It stands up. It stands out. You can see it. And it's easier to pick up because it's already up. You don't have to go down to the ground to pick it up. Now, if I had left the ends loose, this could flop around or worse, catch on something when you have to carry it. And you are gonna have to carry it. So leave it standing. And if you notice, I've got a nice tight coil so that it, it bound, it's bound together very nicely.